we have here in the studio. And I want to say I went here when I was six. He was yes, he was very young when he when he went to school here. <laughs> so we won't talk about our ages at all. Um, and then we have another uh, very special guest, Isabel, um, Isabel Alvarez, and she is a very recent innovation and entrepreneurship grad. Um, I would love for both of you to share a little bit about your background and your experience, and just kind of your journey up until this point. And we'll start with Jason. If you could share a little bit about what you're doing now and kind of what your journey has been like since you uh, left Full Sail. Sure. Um, so I have, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur is what I, what I like to say and actually been said that too because um, ever since I was a kid, I've always been in, uh, interested in owning business, being a business owner ideas. My dad was an entrepreneur um, and I indirectly saw that. So uh, currently I own a company called TSM Studio here in Orlando. It's going to be 20 years old in March 8th, um, which is really exciting, except when you realize that you have a 20 year old business, how old you are, of course, <laughs> my 20 year graduation. Um, and then through that, I was able to, um, I, I created this company with a, with a guy that I met called Next Move. Uh, it was a a sports and entertainment relocation uh, real estate company uh, ended up being uh, purchased by Keller Williams and then we are now the directors of Keller Williams Sports and Entertainment globally and we've also created 40 uh, real estate franchises and growing uh, right now so we have our next move brand uh, throughout the throughout the uh, United States and lots of other businesses along the way so we'll, we'll, we'll probably talk about that afterwards yeah that is really impressive um, and I've known you for close to 50 it Long has time. to be about 15 years yeah. now um, and I toured your studio, TSM, yep. with my class several years ago when we, I taught uh, digital marketing, and that was so interesting. At that time, I don't think you were even involved with Keller Williams at all. No, no, that was about, that's been about three years for that, six years for Next Move. Wow, that's impressive to see how far you've come, so I'm really excited and proud of you. That's it. That's great. Um, Isabel, tell us a little bit about what you're doing because you are currently in a partnership with some other other people that you work with, right? So tell us a little bit about your company and um, what you hope to do with your innovation entrepreneurship degree. Well, um, since I graduated, I have always been driven by communications. So um, I have done freelance all my life. gather up um, two of my best friends and I'm um, creating business where we could take, take photography, do events, sounds, and so um, we love doing that. We are basically doing a wedding, all of that, and most recently I was working as a photo journal studying my master's degree at sale, and I would um, drive the whole island documenting events, people, and places, base, news, and, and want to be heading. I want to create this um, bigger company that could on entertainment and to innovate and do experience for all all people. Yeah, I mean, I'm so excited to hear that. Now, did you create that business plan while you were in your program? Yes, I, I did create all of it. Um, the basic um, steps hard, and, and basically now I just have to launch it. Just gather a team, and it's ready to go and just taking um, every step to make it come true. Well, that's awesome. I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. And what I love about having the two of you on this panel today is that you both have very different perspectives because Jason's been out of school for a long time. Isabel, you just finished up. Um, and I know that your teachers said really wonderful things about you when you were in your degree program. So I know your future is very bright. And I know that you, lots of good things will be coming your way on the horizon. So very excited about that. Um, so Isabel, tell us a little bit about what your goals, you have like, I know you have some goals to start up this new company, but tell us a little bit about what are some of the active steps that you're gonna take in order to make that dream a reality? Well, um, since I'm a master, I, I have to do all the business plan, the market research, the financial framework, network building, marketing, team building, all of that. And since I got all of that and it's already um, in paper and I can see it and I can see how real it is, the next step would be to talk to real investors to um, look for the place, um, if you're going to rent, if you're going to own it, um, to build this place up and, and just gather up a nice lawyer, a financials person and all that so I can just launch it and I just think I would just have to gather 
gather the correct team and start the launching process. We already have the name, all the marketing, everything's down. Ah, oh, wonderful. Well, I'm excited to hear how all that comes together, and I know you'll have to keep me posted on your progress, okay? Um, so Jason, let's talk a little bit about you and what inspired you to become an entrepreneur because you were a recording arts grad because you enjoyed making music. Yes. Making beats. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> um, and that turned into you it's becoming... A new thing. <laughs> okay, that came in... Uh, then you started up your own studio. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey and like what led you to actually want to start your own business. Um, so when I was, when I was a kid, uh, my father, he he was a he worked at a steel metal fabrication company and on the side he built another company and that company acquired um clients that they fed mm -hmm. to the other company and so he made money as he pushed those clients in but then he also got bonused because he did such good production and so long story short of that is is i, I you know, I was just a kid. I wanted to play outside, which is what we did back in those days, right? And I was just remember thinking uh, as I got older, I was like, that was really cool what he did. And I kept, you know, I think we do this all with our parents. I was like, well, if he can do that, I mean, I can do that. And, you know, he was very salesy and outgoing. And, and um, I, I kind of feel like it just was natural. And I, so when I was in high school and I was about 17, I was really into like car stereos and low riders because that was a thing back then of course mm -hmm. keep dating myself here um so i started buying car stereos i learned how to install them i made enough money i drove i grew up in cincinnati i drove up to cleveland bought a gold plating machine came back when i was in high school in 1995 or four or whatever i made fifty thousand dollars in gold plating people's cars while I went to school. Oh wow! Like all their emblems on their cars and things like that. Um, so then I, I've, and that, so I've, I, I have always been a, just a entrepreneur and a salesman. To me, when you're an entrepreneur, you really, you really need to be a salesperson, right? You have to really understand how to talk to people, how to make people like you. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I took and I just flipped. So I took that money and I bought DJing equipment because I did like making beats. Uh -huh. um, and then, but I was like, well, that's just stuff I do for fun. How do I do something in music? So I, I did that. Um, then I came to Full Sail. And then after Full Sail, uh, while I went here, I worked at a studio. Um, when I got done, I tried to introduce some new ideas to the owner and he wasn't interested. So I started TSM six months out of Full Sail. Um, and and th from there, there's been a lot of really neat stuff. I, I owned a, a company called Bottle Star. We had a patent on a, a switch activated lit pour spout. Um, I created a, a product with a friend of mine for the beauty and healthcare. It was a disinfectant pod, so it's like Tide pods, but for instead of barber side and, and the big bottles of blue stuff, when you go to the get your hair done, they put the combs in. Um, it was like a, a measured out pod. Um, and so I, I kind of, you know, I was like, look at it and say, you know, some some entrepreneurs are. I like this industry and I want to do this one thing. And then there are other entrepreneurs and this is how I am where it's like, I literally feel like there isn't any industry that I couldn't just go into and maybe not like a doctor or, you mm -hmm. know, a lawyer, that kind of thing, but like something where I could just go in and go, let me figure out how do I sell? How do I, how do I get clients? How do I market this? That's just always been something that I've had a passion for. Um, and it's never been anything else I've been self-employed for. 30 years. Yeah. And what are the benefits of being self-employed? Freedom. <laughs> you know, I mean, the thing is, is and we were, we, you know, we were all talking about this um, before we got onto this, you know, there's, there's this huge misconception. I don't think it's as much nowadays as it used to be, you know, many years ago that like, oh, I hate my job. I'm going to start my own business. I hate my boss. I'm starting my own business. Um, I have a hundred bosses, a thousand jobs, and I work way more hours. You know, I, I sometimes over the years have looked at, looked at this and said to myself, am I dumb? Am I dumb for doing this? Like, could I could just work nine to five and be off at five o'clock and be hanging out? But the thing is, is if you have a passion for something, then that's something that you constantly want to do. That's how you're going to be successful. So just because you hate your job or you don't like your boss that, or, or you're good at something that you do, that's the, my other thing mm -hmm. while we're on that subject. I've seen a lot of people and I actually had this happening with me. I have a, a really close friend. He is a professional fighter. He is not a business owner. Mm -hmm. So I opened up um, a place for him to create uh, his gym, but I'm finding myself doing a lot of that, that business side of it for sure. him, right? Because just because you're good at a specific thing doesn't necessarily mean that you should be running a business, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a huge difference between um, 
being a business owner and being an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. So you, but you do have the freedom, like we were talking about. I get up at mm -hmm. five, I work till 10, I can take off for two hours, uh, but then I'll be back and I'll be working. So it's, it's really, and, and, and I think too, and I'm sorry, I'm like long-winding this answer, but like no. the other thing for me is the, um, the self value that you feel, mm -hmm. you know, like, like that was something that from my, actually I'll talk about my friend with the gym. He was in the UFC. Mm -hmm. He was well known. He was a fighter. And then he transitioned in owning his, owning this gym that we have together. And it had, it was hard for him to be recognized as a fighter and to go into these things and, and that, and he thought owning this gym was a step down. And mm. I finally convinced him to understand like, Owning your own business is, is it's as exciting as the, it's just a different yes. style of that, right? And that's what I think is big about being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. When you do your own business, you get the benefits of your own hard work mm -hmm. as opposed to working really hard for somebody else. But if you just want to work and be off on the weekends and go to the beach and whatever, then it may not be the best thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think that's really great insight. And I think the same way, you know, I'm an entrepreneur outside of Full Sail. I've had my own art business for probably 14 years. Um, and being able, to, <laughs> being able to put all of uh, what I've learned throughout my experience of learning about business and put it to work yep. has been so rewarding to see the return on that investment of my time, my energy, my money, all of that. And to see it grow is really rewarding. Isabel, how about you? I mean, you've... You have this company, uh, KMZ, that you have a partnership with. What do you see as some of the benefits of being an entrepreneur and like having your own thing? Um, we all going to say freedom and control um, of your time. But I would also like to add that you can also control the, the amount of creativity, the amount of people, the amount of everything that you get. You get to control your time. and and you get to put the best of you in it because like jason said if you're on a night uh, on a night to five maybe you're not getting the best version of of jason in that time so if you can um put the best of you in the time that you know you work your best um with your team you get the best product at the end we um we are an excellent team we're just aside from being friends um we we do stuff really good so we strive for the best and we put ourselves ourselves um when we know that we can make the best for the client that's wonderful i'm glad that you found some really great business partners to work with as well that helps when you get along right for yes. sure <laughs> that's good so say someone wants to start their own business what are like the first five things they would need to do like say you have an idea i want to start up a candle company um, and how do I get that business off the ground? What do I need to do to take the first steps to actually put that into action? Um, so, so I, I want to preface the answer to this just in a, with a generalization of everything we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship and business owners, all that, it's like art, right? If you, you know, somebody paints a, a square on a, on a piece of paper, somebody goes, oh my God, it's an amazing square. And then somebody else goes, that's just a square, right? So being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, in my opinion, is sort of also kind of like in the eye of the beholder. Um, because, and the reason why I say that is this, to answer your question, keeping that concept in mind. So every business is different. There's service businesses, there's product business, there's subscription-based business, there's, there's every kind of style of business. And each one's got a different way that you are gonna go about it, right? Some people are gonna start a business that there is so much competition, but they just don't care because they're passionate and they love it and that's what they want to do. Um, some people are going to do research to find out if that's viable to even start that business. Some people are going to figure out how much money can I actually make if I start this business. So for my opinion on that question, um, you, would, you would first off, obviously, you're going to come up with the brand. Every time I've ever done anything in a business, what's the name of the, what, obviously, what are we doing, right? So if you're, if you're Serenity by Jan candles, right? <laughs> like, you know, you know, you're selling candles, right? Then the next thing is you're going to figure out what your name is and you're going to create sort of like that brand's image. Um, and then I think, it, I think it's important to figure out a business structure. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, m most people are going to go LLC routes, but what does that business structure look like? Um, and then I'm going to say, this is one of my biggest things try to not ever have a partner uh like it, it's really like it's it's i it's tough i mean just say that's the hardest thing i've ever dealt with in all the stuff i've ever done partners 
that it, people change, not even for the bad, you know, not even for the worst. Like 20 years I've been in business, my partner, uh, we were, he was 18 originally. Now, you know, we don't work together anymore, but we're still very close friends. People have kids, people, people get married, people want to move. Like, it's very important to understand. So when you, when you know that, you get your, your entity, you need an operating agreement. And that is very important because mm -hmm. an operating agreement is the Bible of your company. Then after, after that, the, the, the next following steps are, to me, you just, you got to figure out who are you selling to and how do you market to those people? Um, and then pretty much from there, that's, it's it just, it starts to snowball into like, what am I, what's my business now? Like, is this a real thing? Is this going to work? And then like we were all speaking earlier, sometimes you do it because you love it, not so much about the money. So it's that, that goes back to the, the art of this, right? Are you doing this because it's something you want to make a lot of money on? Or is this, are you doing this because this is something that you don't really care how much money you make. You just enjoy making a living, doing what you like. So mm -hmm. that's all really great advice. How about you, Isabel? Anything that you would say, like if you were going to give some advice on what to do to take the initial steps that maybe Jason didn't mention? No, I think he got them all down. I would, I have a lot of friends that come with, with ideas. And the first thing that I ask them is, okay, do you want to make this like for fun? Do you want to make this a one-time project and we just got rid of it? Or do you want to like make a living out of it you want to take a break from your job you want to put pour all your energy into this um what what are your goals is, is this a three months business kind of thing or do you want to make it a year and after that i always love um to start with the creative process like okay um what colors are you seeing what logo is are you imagining and we get all that stuff down and i see the person that that's the best part because they get really into it and then you can see um what are their goals in that? If you get the person excited and they're really loving this and you got all the pictures down and then you start with the hard stuff, like, okay, now you've got all the fun part and, and we know that you love it now. What are we going to do with it? When are we going to do it? How much do you want to make it? Do you not care if it makes money? Do you just want to make it? And once the person is all set with that, it's like Jason said, a snowball. You just go with it and, and life gets you through it and you just succeed at it. Yeah, awesome. So what about some of the challenges that entrepreneurs face? Um, we'll start with you, Jason. I mean, what are some of the biggest, like the toughest moments that you've had, some maybe challenges that you've had as an entrepreneur, and how did you overcome those? This is going to sound really familiar. <laughs> Partners. <laughs> telling you. So, so it's funny because I, um, I've had several. Um, and... And, and, and it's funny because I don't care. None of them are going to see this, but even if they did, I, they probably already know this, right? So TSM, I had a partner for about 15 of the years, and it, it ended up not working out at, in the end. We split up. We didn't talk for a year, but we spent 15 years together. We traveled around, mm -hmm. um, and the guy's still like my best friend. Like, he just found out he was uh, going to become a dad the other day. It was exciting. Like, lo Thank love him to death. And we still work together on a, on like a more like a you know freelance type basis, but it just was like it, it turned into at the end very very bad. Um, when I created the disinfectant pod company, it was with these two other guys, and neither one of them were very experienced. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the most frustrated I could ever have been in my life because it was just like they you know when you when you don't see eye to eye with somebody that controls the business that you have with you that is a very big challenge. So I always tell people like, it's hard though, right? You have to like, you know, you need support. Like the guy that in my first business, he was very, that we would a lot of support in the very beginning. Like when we'd have slow months, we would talk in the morning and it would make me feel better. Uh, my current business now, you know, uh, my, like my, there's days where my partner and I are like besties and now, and then there's days like the last few days where we aren't happy with him because he does things and it's like, you don't understand that you're affecting all of us. So mm -hmm. as you grow, that is a huge thing. You, it's same with financial partners, right? If you take on an investor, that's a partner. Mm -hmm. That person, uh, that person owns part of your business. They can tell you that, you know, they may not have any business acumen at all. And they're like, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing this and you don't. So I would say the challenges are always financial, right? Because sales are key every time. If you don't have sales, you don't have a business. It's all there is to it. Cash flow. I mean, if you don't have money, you don't, it's a hobby, right? Um, and then the partnership is a huge deal. Um, and then staying on top of innovation. That's, I'd say my last, my last thing I'll say on this, 
from the time I started, I mean, if I, I have a company that's 20 years old, you, you, we, we, we made MySpace pages for people <laughs> in the beginning. People watching this probably don't even know what MySpace was. You know what I mean? Like we didn't have internet on phones back then. So, so if I'm not paying attention to what is the most newest, biggest, baddest, brightest thing at all given times, somebody else is. Mm -hmm. And somebody's gonna come in and take away my cash flow which is the most important piece. So I'd say, you know, watch the innovations and the trends in your bit, in your industry, finance, and you know, don't have a partner if you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid partnerships yeah, at all costs. Unless you, but you're probably gonna have to, but just saying. You yeah. Know. Well, the benefits of having a partner, though, are like additional financial resources. Yeah. Sometimes having uh, someone with a different perspective or a different strength. Um, Isabel, can you talk a little bit about, evil. you know, you, we talked about this a little bit before the session about the importance of recognizing your strengths and weaknesses, right? Can you tell yes. the audience a little bit about some of your strengths and weaknesses and how you plan to navigate those situations in the future? Well, we, um, we are friends outside of partners, right? So we can't let um, personal stuff get into it. So one of my favorite rules is when a client comes, if you're not passionate about the client's idea, you don't get to work at it. Well, if you are not willing to put, if you're a bit like, oh, no, I don't think that is a good thing. Well, you, okay, you um, step aside and the persons that, the other two, if we are passionate about it, we get to do it. So um, it's really just a matter of communication. I, I believe we're going to encounter some of the harder points when we keep growing up. But um, our business, we do not live, um, we don't make a living out of it. So that's actually best for us because each of one has their job. So when you get to work with us, you are passionate. Again, oh, I'm saying passionate a lot, but it's just, it's just it's so important that you are enjoying what you do. So I would say our weaknesses um, can be that we, uh, we can make stuff and you know you get mad with a person and then you're like oh how is this going to affect um on the work but we try to just make work work and friendship aside so um the strength is the same that you get to communicate and you get to say look you're doing this the wrong way or you're, you're mixing this up and i would say even with a partner or a team it's really passion guided if you see that your team is not um leading with the same eye to eye connection that that you want to achieve in the in the venture at the end is just not not the same like all, we all have to be in the same boat you have to love what you do and if you don't love it and you don't want to make it put all all of it into into the the project then you're in the wrong steps yes well, we, were, we are going to have a Q&A at the end, but I see that people are already submitting questions, which is really exciting. One of the questions that popped up here on the screen is actually related to a question I was going to ask you guys. Um, it's related to securing funding to launch your business. So, Isabel, can you start by telling us a little bit about what you learned in your degree program about how to approach investors, like maybe give them some tips? And then, Jason, I would love for you to kind of tell your story about um, how you've you've uh, navigated you know, funding throughout your, your entrepreneurial journey. So Isabel, start us off by some t giving um, some tips. Well, I would say everything I learned was a good tip because I hate financial as we said before, but for the most part, prepare a solid business plan and know your numbers and understand your market and identify your perfect investors because each investor is unique and what works with one may not work with another and just have a strong pitch. I, I learned that through all my whole, my whole masters because you don't know um, if you are going to meet the perfect investor at an inconvenient time. So if you have a pitch down and you're confident about what you want to do and you don't have the money, you don't have anything, but you're so confident and you can convince them in a minute and get a meeting after that that's that's perfect you just made made your your <laughs> business another you gave your business another opportunity so just have the confidence and a good pitch and everything will just work out fine okay is there somewhere that they can go to like actually seek out an investor like um, how do they how do you get in front of somebody um i have been in investor groups i have been in like the small business launchers opportunities mm -hmm. and just 
network a lot. I get to one of the best um, um, people meeting investor really is the places that you don't thought of meeting them. So just when you get that opportunity and you're standing in front of a person that can make your business come true, well, just acknowledge that, like be sure, uh, be aware of the situation. And if you get to be in it, just pitch it out. And, and, and if it's not that person, maybe that you can make a connection. You, okay, maybe you don't like it. Do you know people that will be willing to, um, where, where, I can, where I can meet other people, other investors that are willing to help me out in this project? That's, that's really great advice. Now, Jason, tell us a little bit about your experience because you've never really had to seek funding, right? But you've been able to launch your business? Well, I've, I have a lot I could say on this one. Okay, um, but yeah, <laughs> please no, share. I, 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 I've, I've <laughs> definitely seeked funding, but uh, so let me, look, sorry. You can always <laughs> just stop me on these things because literally I could talk about this stuff all day. So let's start from the, from the beginning, right? The, the, if you, some people need funding because they legitimately need funding to, to make that business work. Right. Some people, and I'm, I'm guilty of this in the very beginning, and, th and, I, and I, had a, so, I was so lucky to some of the people I met in the beginning. Some people want funding so that they can live off that while they're kind of getting their business started, right? Well, the one, there was a, an older guy that I met in the very beginning who I said, you know, would you loan me 50 grand so that I could get things going and this, that, and the other. And he said, you know, if I loaned you 50 grand, you're never going to be successful because what happens is then you go into a um, comfort zone mm -hmm. and then oh, I don't need to, I don't need to push hard. I don't need to worry about it because I, I can pay my bills this month. And so when I started TSM, I had no money at all. Like I literally just did it all from scratch. I remember I was dry. I, I got to a point one day where I was like, I'm, I'm going to run out of money. And I got a client that day. It was like two grand. And at that time I could live off that forever. And I was just like, Oh my God, this is awesome. And so you fast forward. So you start, you start there. If you, if you need funding, that's different. But what you have to understand about investors and investing is, is there's just real simple. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make, if they're, if they're savvy, like if you are smart enough in life to acquire money that you can, you can invest with, like if you have a million dollars that you made and you're like, I'll spend 200,000, all of a sudden what you're going to spend that $200,000 on becomes real. Like I, I want to spend every dime I had when I was younger and I had no money. Now I have pretty good money. Mm -hmm. I am like the cheapest person ever because <laughs> now that I have it, now I'm like, wait a minute, now I want to lose it. So if you're savvy enough to, to get yourself to a point where you have $10 million and you're going to invest a million dollars with somebody, you're going to want to know, am I going to make my money back and how quickly am I going to make my money back? Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing. So people will write these, these business plans and stuff like that. But it's like, if you can't genuinely make sense to a person on how they're going to get paid back their money and their, and their ROI, it, it, it's 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 very tough to secure funding. There are a lot of places you can you can try crowdfunding. You can go to there's investor groups. Um, Isabel said I agree with that. There's a there's a ton of those. Banks are tough because banks are are very traditional. That you have to have a right. great credit score. You have to all this stuff. Family is a good one. Um, friends if they have it. The problem with family and friends is is like then some now you're mixing fun, money with friends and family and that can get a little dicey if if you know hey where where's my, where my money at. Um, so to me, I always tell people like, if you have to first be able to prove, because if anyone's going to give you a hundred grand, they're smart enough to know if they're going to get their hundred grand plus their 20% or whatever it might be back. Right. Or they're going to say, okay, I'll give you a hundred grand, but I want to own 80. You have all seen this on Shark Tank, right? Oh, sure. I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. I want 80, 80% 80 of your business, or I want a royalty in perpetuity, even when I pay you back. Mm -hmm. And so my thing to you is if you need it you, and you have to have it, okay, do it. Just like a partner, right? It's like we talked about before. If you need it, you have to have it. You got to do it. If you can figure out a way to just hustle, that's, uh, and again, I, not everyone can do what all, we all have something different. It's different for everybody. I had a startup uh, company with my friend. We were going to do, um, we, we created an Alexa skill for mm -hmm. the multifamily industry, and we needed money for that. Uh, we built it, but we needed money to, to take it further. And it was just like the, the people that are going to give you that money are going to brutally ask you questions that are just 
you, you have to, you know, because the thing is, is if you have a, an idea that is actually going to make that money and make them back, you'd have 10 people standing in line. Mm -hmm. If you had an idea that I it could prove to me that I was going to make money tomorrow, I'll give you the money right now. Anybody would, right? And so that's the hardest part about the whole funding is everyone sees it like it's on Shark Tank, like you walked in. What you aren't seeing on Shark Tank is that those people have reviewed the financials. Those people yeah. have renewed the money. Like they have seen how many clients they have and how many sales they have. For you to get money when you haven't sold anything, Thing or you haven't proved your concept, I'm taking 90% of your company because then I'm going to run it and right. I'm going to protect my own money. So when it comes to funding, just it's, 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 it's a, the jungle. If you have the right idea, it's going to, people are going to stand in front of you and hand you cash. If you don't, you're going to go in a circle. So yeah. that's. Well, and I think a lot of the students that come here to Full Sail, they're pursuing creative degrees, right? So they're learning how to create movies or learning how to create a uh, create beats. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're learning how to create things. And I think in the, uh, the DIY economy that we operate in now, it's very, it's much easier to, to have a side hustle and build that before seeking investment. And that's what I always advise students to do that if they are looking to pursue a creative career, um, start creating, like create, 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 and then get that business going. Because once it's going, you may or may not need investors, you know, it'll, it'll depend on, you know, the business concept, but we have, there's so many of our students have the opportunities now that I, didn't exist before I would the say internet. Just one last thing on this too. One, one advantage you have in the creative space, especially like if you're, let's say you're in music and you're trying to create an album or you're, a, you're going to an independent filmmaker, right? You could get people to invest be, by being an executive producer. Hey, could you put in ten thousand dollars? I'll make you the executive producer. We did that on a documentary. We shot a documentary back in two thousand fourteen about five um, wounded vets uh, that lost their sight in war. And one of the biggest things we did was, in order to, to make that happen, we went out and we got several business owners to put in five thousand, ten thousand title sponsorships. So think about that's as another funding source sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're making something that's not going to get anyone any kind of marketing or promotion, then that's not a viable option. But you just need to be creative in how you're thinking about it because, again, one of two things is going to happen. Someone's going to give you money because you have an obvious thing that's going to make them money or they're going to take control of your business. And one just note, sorry, the, the, the company that I had was the, the disinfectant pods. The gentleman that actually created the product brought his friend in and his friend put in $15,000, mm. okay? So over time, he continued to put money into this business with us. So at the end of it, he actually had maybe $150,000 of his own money into the company, right? Mm -hmm. He was able to actually force the other owner who invented the pod mm -hmm. out of the company because he, the, the court or the law and legal always recognizes the person who put the money in. Doesn't matter if you made it, if I put in a hundred grand, I'm the one that's the, the, they recognize like you owe me my money back, right? So yep. just remember that, like you could still lose your idea, even if you're the, the, the main person or the inventor, if you start taking money from the wrong people. Similar things happen with uh, Tesla and Elon Musk, right? Yes. So exactly. Tesla was actually uh, created by a, a different person and then he came in and invested and now he owns the company, which yep. is pretty crazy if you think about yeah. it. You yeah, know? that's the thing is so. that when you take a partner on or, or financial, especially financial, they're, everyone's gonna look at that first. So if you, you, you do that, it doesn't matter if you invent, I mean, this is a literally, Mod Clean is the name of our product. It's still out in Sally's and, and other stuff. I sold my shares a couple years ago, but the guy that I started that company with who actually showed us the prototypes of the pods was pushed out of the company by the other gentleman because he had uh, all this money invested. And so when we went back, it was like, well, you have to pay it back. You can't pay it back, so just give me your shares. And he was forced out and that, that happens a lot. Wow, something to consider for sure when you're, we're taking, when you're seeking investment. Um, so I know you've created so many different ventures, Jason. It's like you've had your hands in many, many, many different products. When it comes time to figure out if a market is viable, like if it makes sense to launch that business, what are some of the factors that you take into consideration? And then, um, Isabel, I would love to hear your input on this as well. I know you have more limited experience with starting companies, but I know that you did a lot of market research when you were writing your business plan. So I would love to hear about that. So go ahead and start us off, Jason. Uh, uh, this one, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll do a short run on. Um, you know, the thing, the thing about it is we're always so excited about our idea. 
right? We all like, like I created this. It's like, yeah, but if you really look around, it's probably three or four of them, 10 of them, right? I mean, the apps were a great example. The app, app was like a gold rush, right? All of a sudden, everybody wanted to make an app. And I was like, did you look to see if there's already one of those apps out? Because it's probably already an app like that. And 90% of the time, they come back and be like, nah, crud, there is already an <laughs> app like that. Yeah. And so one thing is, 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 are you really making something innovative? And even if you are, then how do you tell people about it? And that is, that's you know, some marketing comes into play. Um, so for me, whenever everything that I've ever gotten involved in, um, I, and Isabella said this before, and I was going to say, I, I wrote down my four pillars, which I'll say by the end of this, or what my four pillars of, of business are, but one is passion. So at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself, that is the number one thing that you can do. I don't, I don't like coming up now, I'm a little bit older and a little bit like experienced and wiser, but I still maintain the mentality of like, no one can tell me that I can't do anything. And I don't mean like the police can't tell me I can't do something. What I mean is like, I believe in myself a million percent, a million percent, right? No way if I have my mindset on it, can I not accomplish this? And that takes sometimes not, not eating, not sleeping, you know, working, uh, you have to outwork everybody else, but you have to believe in yourself. So when you're looking at, a, at the viability of your product, there's a lot to look at. Does the market need it? Are you solving a problem? These are all the corporate things that people say. Personally, I'm gonna say this one, uh, two times before this is over. <laughs> My motto in this is always this, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. And everyone laughs like that's some joke. I'm not kidding. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. If you believe in yourself and you, and you do it, just go for it. Because if you lose and you fail, it's like paying, for, you paid to go to full sale. You paid mm -hmm. for education. A failure is a payment for more knowledge. I love that. That's so inspiring. Awesome. I think one, one of the things that I tell students too is that You've got to find your point of differentiation. Yes. So I agree. If you are passionate about what you want to do, you should put it into to action, just like Jason said. But find what makes you unique so that you can sell that point and stand out amongst the competition. I, I want to so. transition what you just said into to Isabel because she said something earlier before we started this that I was like, yes, that's exactly what I tell people. <laughs> uh, a while ago, I had a friend who was a personal trainer, was trying to figure out what could he do. And I said, well, you got to find something different, man. Like, why don't you make it where you take people to, a, to the park and they meet up at different parks. So now you're learning about parks and you're doing personal training, right? So Isabel, um, if, if you don't mind, I would love to transit. When, when you were saying that earlier, you were talking about how you are working with what you're doing and how you wanna make it different on the island. Like you wanna create these things. It's a transition to what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, so I think while ideas keep the same, no execution is identical. So you wanna make your business as unique as be afraid of competition so people are always like oh there are too many of that i'm not gonna do that. No, think otherwise like researchers say hey, what do what are they missing that i can make my one of a kind because for here in Puerto, i want to make in immersive installations for that to go through and instead of going on on saying oh we don't have that, that i want to make that here and i was able to know my target audience and it was so hard to learn that because we all have an idea and we say oh you what is your target audience and we say oh this is for everyone and even if it is there's a specific customer for your idea and one you're going after so marketing has to go to the people that solution to a need business so um focus on that and, and that's what your unique proposition and is gonna make it yours and even if it's cheesy and we don't want to say the same lines to so just do it if you don't really try it you don't know um what you're capable of and if you're not scared because it's a really scary process and I, it's always going to be scary because now but i talk to entrepreneurs always scared because maybe on it your living depends on it so if you're not scared it it's going well because you're always going to have something on the line and with passion and idea and if you do your research and look and say well my idea is unique because this really believe it go ahead and do it that's really great advice so yeah having no fear and just putting it out there right that's like the first step when you have an idea to just embrace it and go for it um, so I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about work-life balance too, because sometimes when you own your own company, you're, there's a lot of pressure put on you to 
make sure that the company is successful and you could like work 24 seven trying to make that dream a reality. How do you balance your work and your home life to make sure that you're like, that's healthy, like a healthy balance. And Isabel, you want to share with us first? Sure. I have, uh, I have a funny story. When I was doing my master, I have, master, I have a normal job and mm-hmm. I have my house and I had my company. So I was like all over the place and I was saying, okay, um, in life, you got to get one thing down and it's money. You have to know what, what where I'm going to take this from. So I have my, my job for that, but I had to because I want to put all my energy and passion into what I wanted to work. So I was able to do my passion through my master's because since my homework was about what I wanted to do, I got down there. So I got to lay down all that I, that, all that I wanted to do in that master's. And then I, with my life and my house life, I just made task made um like a schedule and i'm okay you're gonna work your normal job from this time to this time your homework with is your passion in this time and you're gonna have fun and relax and just sleep and um in the in that same schedule. i just people to know that balance is important because you can just burn out and just miss yourself and, and all, all that my normal job mixed with my master was really challenged, but I, I made it work with a lot of organization. And if you put the right amount of energy and then with my company, I was able just to schedule ahead um, all of the clients that we have, have. Okay. What is your project? What do you need? And we just narrow down the dates. And since we do not make a living out of it, we just put it into specific calendars and we will able to make their project work, make a profit out of it, but do not have, like depend on it. So just organize and, and really plan ahead of what you want to do. That's awesome. So good planning. That's important. How about you, Jason? Because you're doing everything. I don't know how you find time to do anything else. I just don't sleep anymore. I went to full <laughs> sale, so now I don't sleep. Um, for 20 years. Um, I, I, so I, th- I would say the first thing in this, in this answer is make sure, like, learn yourself, right? So, for example, I know, I know from, f- like, I'm an early bird. I used to not be, but now I'm old, so now I, I get up early, early. Like, I, I feel like each year I get up, like, 30 minutes early, right? Um, but so from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., I know that's my, so one of, one of the things that I'm passionate about, which is also something I do is graphic design videos. I do it for the businesses that I, that I work with or I run or whatever. But I know from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. that I, am a, I can sit at my computer because my brain is t- able to tell me no one else is up yet, no one's gonna call me, no one's gonna bother me. I don't feel like the need to look at my phone or my email. And so I've, re- I've recognized over the years, that time is my creative time and then also in the evening is my creative time. Okay, everyone's off work. They're not bothering me as much now, six o'clock to whatever time is, is this. And then there's that middle time. And, and my point of what I'm saying is it's like, you need to figure that out for yourself, right? So I know once 10 a.m. hits and people are ready to have meetings and Zooms and you know I've got to go somewhere, I got to do whatever. Those are the times where there's no way I can sit at my computer and work on something. And, and, and Isabel and I were talking about this earlier about because we're, she's also does creative content and it's, you know, you. She made a great point earlier by saying when if you know nine to five Jason may not be the best the best version of Jason, right? Because at that time when you have to are forced, you know, and, and Heather's the same, she's an artist, you 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 just feel the vibes and you're ready. Like as they say in the studio, right? Like, oh, we've got the vibe in here. So you you in order to balance it, you have to know. So like I was telling them I, I took a 20 mile bike ride yesterday at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Because I knew at that point I wasn't I was like not going to do anything really good right there business wise. So do it in the morning, get as much done before anyone comes up. So getting to know yourself and getting to know when are you the, when it, when, you know, I love exercise, got to try to get in every day. When am I going to do that? And so she also, Isabel said this, and I'm going to echo this planning. It's all about your planning. So I know that if I am going to have meetings or something in the evening, I, it's important to me to stay healthy and exercise. So when am I going to fit that in? And then, but if I fit that in, 
I'm not going to give it up in between 5 and 10 a.m. because I know that's my creative time. So knowing yourself and and creating that plan and then you and living on a calendar, I live on my Google calendar. Like those are the ways that you fit it all in. Um, same with the weekends. And, and, and if you're passionate to that, see everything, people are always like, how do you do so much stuff? Because I love all the stuff that I do. That's as easy as that. If you don't love what you're doing in a business or as an entrepreneur, then you will burn out. Mm -hmm. But if it's something where it's like, I'm on the couch and I'm like, oh, I really want to go over and continue working on that After Effects project I was working on because I just loved, I like, I was really into it. That's when you know you found the right thing. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. So before we go to our audience, because we're almost at that time, I have one last question to ask you guys and then we'll take all of these great, other great questions that people are sending in. Um, what, like, of all the things that you could share with somebody who wants to start up their own business, what are, like, the networks, the resources, the tools that you guys have found the most valuable when it comes to starting a business? And if you could share those just so that they can maybe take that into consideration, that would be helpful. Isabel, do you want to start off? I'm um, sure. I would say the case is it's really helping me on the uh, start of my master's to get here. Um, just finding people that believe in you and can guide you through or teach. Um, if you're scared of something, for example, I can manage. I left my job and I got a seasonal retail job to make sure that I know how I think I could be a leader. I want to make sure what are the, the pros and the and where do I lack. So I went ahead and throw everything and instead drop at a retail possible as a manager make sure that everything in my resume or everything that I need I could have a little bit of experience. So, so if you think that oh I'm not really that good at it don't be afraid of looking for that you could make that work or shadowing or maybe an internship everything that you you, you can keep learning uh, I say that mentors are always learning and the world is Moving thing is innovating. You're learning each day. So um, if you can find a a mentor, if you can find a group, if you can just, just always keep learning by you're going, going to YouTube, watching a lot of videos, or, or just I don't know, just learn, um, read, yeah. reading stuff. You can always keep learning and making yourself better and find the tools to make you work is that's what's worked for me because just out there as as much as jason can say maybe you can go to this place or that but just network a lot and the persons that you meet that you know that click that they can just squeeze this learn all all that you can learn that's great advice yeah mentorship is so valuable like learning from somebody else that's been there done that that is invaluable so i I really appreciate you sharing that. And I hope that you learned a lot in your degree program too, you know, like by you taking the step and um, getting the education on how to apply innovation and seek entrepreneurship, I feel like that really set the groundwork of you finding success and starting your own business. So I appreciate you sharing that perspective. And Jason, you don't have a business degree, but you have been able to really thrive um, and starting your own business. I think part of that is just your entrepreneurial mindset, the fact that you're always looking for ways to um, continuously improve yourself and, and um, grow businesses. So what tips and resources do you have for anybody that's looking to start up their own company? So can I, can I read a couple? I, I don't normally ever write stuff. I like, I like literally <laughs> freestyle all this stuff just because it's just what I live. But I, I, so I want to say this about that answer, and then I'd like to read these since this is a, kind of our last thing. And this is some stuff I wrote I thought would be very helpful for people. Sure. Um, so the hard, question, the hard answer for that is we're all doing something different, right? So you, you, Isabel honestly said she, was, she nailed it. You're, the people say your network is your net worth. And that's mm -hmm. for sure. Like the people that I've met along the way, you know, I worked in a studio and I met so many people um, that introduced me to other people. Like right now I have the, you know, Grammy, bazillion Grammy award winner, Dark Child, who's been running my studio out for the last two years. He like lives there. It's like the full entire time he's he, like, he's there. Nice. He's introduced me to Chris Tucker and Fred Hammond. And my business partner in Next Move was indirectly, I met him through a guy that met me because he liked the work that we did for Dark Job, 
Mm -hmm. So indirectly from that guy, from, from Rodney, Rodney Jerkins, I've met like a zillions of people. So network, and then she's also right about mentorship. When I got out of here, I, I had great mentors, um, and now I'm the mentor, right? And so you, 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 you keep going that way. And then, so, so other than that, I would say it's hard to answer that question based on, if you're in a certain type of business, there's probably associations, there's probably networking meetings, B&Is, and things like that. But I just want to say these because I think these are really important for people that are watching this. Um, there are four things that I think are super important about a business, and I think these are, and they go in an order, right? Number one is passion, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to say this and come back. Number two is ideas. Nice. But when you're passionate about something, then those ideas just flow. So before you get involved in something, you just you have to love it. Like to your core, you have to love it. If you love something, you're thinking about it all the time. And when you think about something all the time, the ideas will just come from that. Then once you do that, it's all about the execution. Are you able to do, um, are you, are you, how are you going to deploy that and execute it? And then the last one is perseverance. 100% perseverance is number one in this. There's been a lot of times I wanted to quit. There's been a lot of times where I, I thought I was going to get sued or I thought I couldn't, I was going to make the bills. I used to sit and, and wonder how I was going to pay my Amex. Like, oh my God, my Amex is going to be. And I started realizing, why am I worrying about how I'm going to pay it? I should just be worried about how I'm going to pay it. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Um, and so that brings you to another thing when you come to perseverance. There's also a point in, a bus in business when you're working where you have to think about cutting your losses versus giving up, right? Everybody's like, oh, no, never give up. Sometimes you should stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if you're losing money a lot or this isn't worried, like you, you got to give it the old college try or whatever. But at some point in time, you have to be able to identify like this is not going to get better and I need to stop now. Um, and then uh, I actually said these other two already. So the la <laughs> uh, it, with, within this, but um, I, I, my last one on this will be like, think about failure as a payment, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said this earlier, and I, I cannot stress this enough. There are a ton of things that happen to me over time. Uh, business failures. Um, when I, when I had my poor spout, we, I, I worked with in China and got molds made and got those shipped over here and that business failed. But I learned about international importing and exporting from that business. When I did the, the disinfectant pods, I negotiated a contract with Sally's Beauty, which is a huge company. And I sat in there and I did that. And all of those experiences that, and that company didn't work out. I sold my shares, it didn't work out. But there's no person in this planet I'd be afraid to sit in, in a room with and have a, a business meeting with. I'm not intimidated by people. And all of those things came from failures, not from successes. It's like being in your comfort zone versus not being in your comfort zone, right? Like if you, that's why I say like, if you take money to stay in your comfort zone, you're never surviving. You're never in survival mode. You're never in grind mode. And survival modes where we can do our best work because we have no choice. So I know that wasn't what you asked, but I, I, I wanted to make sure I got those, no, those that's, things to the, that the, the I room. love all the advice, all the things. I love that you said failure is your payment because I think there's so many people that would just would like give up. Yep. <laughs> at, at, I think anytime somebody fails, it's such a hard thing to take. You know, any failure in life is hard to take. Yeah. But it's usually those failures that end up making you try harder, that be, help you become a better person, that teach you lessons about yourself yeah. and about about your business, right? And so I feel like failure is often the best thing that could happen. It, right? You never want it to happen even when it does, but sure. you, you just, you have to, and you just have to be realistic. A lot of people come into business and, and they, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this a million times. Like bottle star was going to make me rich. Mod clean was going to make me rich. All these things are going to make me rich. And then next move came along out of nowhere. And it was actually the thing that really like I made real, real, real money on. And I, I it was just, it was like, I wasn't even expecting that. Mm -hmm. So you just never know where, where and when it's going to come from. And every day, if you're just learning from, your failures and from your successes, being a leader is never stopping to learn. That's the number one thing for me for being, I'm a, I'm a total leader for sure. I never stop learning and I always listen to my team, to people around me, never think you know everything. That's the killer right there. That is really great advice. So we have a question for you, Jason. This came from our audience. Where do you feed your passion on different phases of a business? Because, uh, you know, starting something off versus it running for a while, it, you know, those are various phases. So tell us about where that passion comes from. That is, <laughs> that's a freaking great question. That is a really, <laughs> really good question. I'm like, like, wow, uh, whoever asked that, good job. Um, ah, yeah, that's, wow. 
it's always easy in the beginning, right? We're always excited, right? Like it, it's always exciting. And you, and like it, it kind of piggybacks off what I just said, right? Like um, when I've come and done some of the pack or some of the, the students when they, when they've got their projects or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they, they showed like some of these financials and some of these plans and they're like wildly like, I'm going to be sick. We're going to make a billion dollars in the first year <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. So uh, <laughs> maybe not, but, but don't, don't feel bad if you don't. The, the, I think the thing of it is, is like, that question is a question for where you are in your in your journey as an entrepreneur, right? And what I mean by that is like the way I would think about something when I was 25 compared to how I think at 46, very much different, right? Like back then I had a lot more energy. I would, I would, I mean, I like when I started my studio, I would go downtown Orlando with a backpack of flyers and I'd hand them out to everybody and I'd tell them about the studio. There's no way I'm doing that now, right? But I don't need to do that now because I've got to a point where I'm experienced and I have people that do that part of it. And then I am the visionary. So when you look at how do you deal with those different phases of business, it's gonna depend, again, all of this is dependent on what it is. If it's something that I love, then it, then it never matters. So you just always wanna keep going, right? But I think the best way to, the best advice I could give you is to always try to innovate. Right, because the thing is, it's if it becomes stagnant, or if you are you've just been doing the same thing all the time, and you're just kind of like, oh, this is this is the same thing, then you're gonna get bored with it, and in that phase, you're gonna start being like, I don't know if I really want to do this, and you start looking for something else. So if you're always trying to figure out the new way or the best way to continue to do something that that is making that business exciting and fun, and you love it, that's how you're gonna keep it going on and on and forever. And again, I'm different because I, I like, like, I mean, you could tell me, hey, I'm going to make mugs and my mind is immediately going to be like, well, we're going to get the mugs from here. We're going to do this. We're, that's just the way that I think about stuff. But some people are going to focus on one individual thing. That's where I would always be looking at the innovations. Always, how am I making this better? How am I doing something? How am I making new clients that aren't in my client like market pool right now? Like, how am I pulling people in that like, you know, women 40 to 60, when my market is men 20 to 30, like, how do I do that? That's exciting and interesting. And that's how I keep it interesting. That's great. We have uh, one more question before we wrap up today. And this is for both of you. So Isabel, I'll ask you first. Um, do you invest in professional development with your business partners, teams, and yourself? So oftentimes when you're working together with other people, um, is there anything that you do as from like a professional development standpoint, whether that be it could be team building. It could also be uh, seeking out new skills or getting more education on certain things. How about you, Isabel? Yes, we always, always are on rich. We, my best friend actually loves um, in learning. She, she, um, her job fit pays for a lot of stuff. So she just loves that and, and shakes it to Spanish. Look, I got, I just got this certification on communion or strategic customer service and I'm like okay and she just loves um keeping keep keeping herself um on the edge of learning so I this master was one of them I was like oh I can be an entrepreneur I can do this is so, so easy and when I started to get I went to the to the mall and I said oh I want to rent out this space and this is my idea and they started asking me questions like okay um what's your business structure what is your name what is your lawyer's whatever. And I was like, okay, I'll get back to you on that. And I started <laughs> a lot of information. And I say, well, if I can't learn all of this, uh, I might as well just start learning a bits of it. And I stumbled upon a video on YouTube, a full sale um, from my, my master's degree. I believe he's um, like a, the director or something. And he was pitching out like, wake up, you are not going to be able to do this if you do not learn and if you don't put the time to yourself so i went ahead and the other day uh, the next day i just put out my application to do the masters and i invested i invested my time my money and everything that i got to just learning the correct steps of doing um what i wanted to do so if you can invest either time money anything that you have if you do it with with the, the passion that we keep repeating is gonna be rewarding anything that you do that's that's awesome and I appreciate that you are proactive in your own personal development, right? Your professional development to really help propel you forward in the future. So that's wonderful. How about you, Jason? Do you invest in professional development? Yeah, it's funny. We just, um, uh, so for Next Move, which is our 
real estate company. We have uh, about 40 franchises all over the country. And literally the beginning of this month, the October 4th, we all went to Atlanta and um, I built out this curriculum and we sat in a giant U shape in a room and we all spent time getting to know each other because we all meet up on Zooms and we do that. And then we had some, um, some speakers, we had some uh, awards, we did some things. So, you, you know, you have to always, uh, the team that you work with, you have to get to, to really know them personally. You have to get to know them professionally. Um, you have to know what, you know, you have to know what the buttons to not push and, and things in order to, to try to keep the peace. Like I'm always from the mindset of being like very proactive on, um, you know, not like, like I'm not somebody that will ever talk about politics or race or religion or any, any, anything that's, that's, that could trigger someone I'm dealing with because in business, it's like, I'll work with anybody. I'll take anyone's money. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like I, that's not the place for that. And so it's, to me, it's important to understand your, your partners, your clients, your friends in creating um, something that makes those, those people also feel good. Like our event that we did in Atlanta, we walked away from that. Everybody, you know, we gave away awards. Um, we had people that got a chance to speak and talk about themselves with everyone else. They, they connected with each other. So I think, you know, it's like I go back to the whole leadership and never stop learning. 100% always, always be, if, you're, if you stop for a second in business, somebody else is running past you. So you've got to always make sure you're, you're doing something to keep it moving. So That's really great advice and a great way to end our conversation today. So I want to thank our audience for tuning in today and, and watching us share some information about entrepreneurship. And I especially want to thank Isabel and Jason for taking time out of their very busy days. So I know, I know both of you have things going on that would pull you away from this. So I appreciate you making time for our students and our prospective students. So I hope everybody has a great day and thanks again for being here. Thank you guys. It was great. Thanks.